What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box. Drop a like to this video if you are a fan of Pawn Stars. Hey there everyone, what's up? And welcome back to another video. This series has equally been a major chunk of emotional, funny, and sometimes romantic scenes for almost a decade now. It always had its share of awkward moments though, and also certain mishaps. From being scammed to dealing with frustrated customers, the Pawn Stars have seen it all. Let's take a look at seven horrible Pawn Star customers. But before we look into those customers, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on anything. All right, let's begin. Number seven, a fake Gibson mandolin. A man strolled into the shop and took advantage of Chum Lee's poor awareness of the music industry because Chum Lee was at the moment the only one present in the shop. Chum Lee makes a deal with a client for $1,500 for what seems to be an original Gibson mandolin, whereas it was a replica worth the fraction he'd offer for it. Before a specialist could be called in to go through the instrument, the deal was already made. When the professional was called in to test the mandolin, the decal was removed with scissors and the G in Gibson did not suit the original name. And complicating things more, the surface of the instrument seemed to be plastic, while it's a real Gibson would have used lacquer. Poor Chum Lee was terribly scammed and the customer was barred from the pawn shop permanently. In the 1930s, the thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. Gibson Number six, the stolen diamonds. A guy came to the shop to sell the gems he had with him. And even though the Harrisons knew something was off, they dismissed it when the man persuaded them that the diamonds were genuine. The gems were thoroughly checked by the shop owners and they even reviewed the invoice that the man gave them. So after contemplating for a while, they ended up paying the guy a total of $40,000. But soon enough, the police reported to the shop and informed the owners that the diamonds they had purchased for $40,000 had been looted from a woman. The cops took the gems with them, leaving the Harrisons on the verge of a nervous breakdown. They were devastated to know that their store would nearly go bankrupt after all of this fiasco. Guy in a suit comes in the pawn shop, got a big set of diamond earrings. Number five, signed letter by Napoleon Bonaparte. A guy pretending to have Napoleon-like attributes appeared to the gold and silver pawn shop to offer a letter confirming to have been signed by Napoleon himself. He attempted to make a small conversation by asking Corey how his wife felt he looked so much like Napoleon, and because of that, he intended to sell the letter for $4,000. Corey lowered the cost to $2,000, and an offer was made, but eventually, it was disclosed that the letter was actually fake. Surprisingly, when Corey revealed it to one of the specialists, he strongly dismissed the possibility that the letter might be true. This was so ridiculous. I'm thinking more along the lines of 1500 Ooh, that sounds low. <laughs> Number four, Austin Healy Sprite. Rick Harrison made a stupid move and failed to test the engine of the car since he instantly falls in love with this Austin Healy. He ended up trusting the seller blindly. The vehicle apparently looked perfectly fine, but the dealer was unable to start it when he tried doing so in front of Rick. Also, the dealer admitted himself that the battery must be dying. Still, Rick didn't even bother removing the turf and test whether what the seller told him was right. Ultimately, the poor guy ended up purchasing this car and then discovered the maintenance would cost a lot. What's wrong with it? It has spun main bearings, it's rattling. You see that right there? That's Number three, Vault from Wells Fargo. A dealer came into the shop with a really ancient Wells Fargo storage vault and it had a couple of rusted chains tied to it. Rick, who was deeply fascinated by the rusted down shackles, ended up paying $450 for an object that an analyst eventually identified as being totally false. Poor Rick. All right, well, tell me about these things. This ball and chain right here uh, actually comes from the human prison. Number two, youth Indian vest of the 1980s. A man walked into the shop along with a vest that was actually designed and made of beads that covered the entire outer part of the vest. It honestly looked authentic. The guy initially demanded $1,800 for it, but Rick negotiated and ended up paying $1,300. However, when the vest reached an expert, 
he revealed that it's not an object that could be even used and could only be displayed as a souvenir. The guy was clearly a liar. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle of 13. That's what I could do. All right, I'm gonna go with that. Number one, souvenirs of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Once, a guy came into the store with some souvenirs from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It included the golden egg, the golden ticket, the Wonka bars, the cap of Willy Wonka, and last but not least, the ultimate gobstopper. He played very smart and asked Rick to pay separate for each one of the items. Reviving his childhood memories, Rick, without doubting the legitimacy, agreed to pay him $100,000. It was soon disclosed that the actual amount of the items was just between twenty dollars to $40,000 only. How sad is that? This is the original hat that Gene Wilder wore in the original film. Despite being experienced, I'm sure it must be frustrating for the Pawn Stars to fall into the trap over and over again. This brings us to the end of our video, and we really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then let us know by liking the video. Stick around for more amazing content, as we will be seeing you soon in another video. Until then, take care, and goodbye.